Welcome back everyone to Learning with Jelly. Today is day 12 of our 30 day sequel challenge where we're gonna dive into two more clauses of the select statement. That is the group by clause and the having clause. Let's look at our agenda. So we are gonna discuss the group by and having clauses, and then we're going to discuss the difference between the having clause and the where clause, because students tend to confuse these the most. And then we're gonna hop right into SQLite Studio to practice. So if you're new to the 30 day challenge, welcome. On your screen, you have two QR codes. The whole goal here is to work for 30 days consistently on learning beginner to intermediate SQL skills that you can apply to projects and thus land a data role. So the topic list is going to have a list of all the topics as well as their videos and supplemental resources. And the Facebook support group is going to be a support group where you can join a chat to talk to others if you have questions about the videos, have troubleshooted something, et cetera. So today we are learning the group by and having clause. So remember that the select statement is made up of all the clauses that you see here. The select statement has the select clause, the from clause, where, group by, having, order by, and limit. We've already learned what's in red, so now we are going to touch base on the group by and having clause. So the group by clause is named exactly how it sounds. Its functionality is exactly how it is named, better yet. It's used to arrange data into groups, and we had a sneak peek of this in our previous video. It is great when you pair with aggregate functions to get group statistical summaries. So in this case, we are having the aggregate function of count, and we are going to count the number of tracks for each album ID. So the output would be album one has 10 tracks, album two has 11 tracks, and so forth and so forth. So this group by clause is actually going to give us an output broken out by that group's value instead of returning us one number like a regular aggregate function will do. The having clause groups filters the data based off of the group by variable. So the having clause is a filter where you need to have the group by clause in order to have a having clause. The having clause does not function on its own. It has to be paired with the group by clause. So in this case, we're still grouping by that album ID, but we're only returning album IDs that have greater than 10 tracks. And you see that eliminated album ID one, we're only keeping values that are greater than 10. So having is a filter and where clause is a filter, but what is the main difference here? The where clause filters the entire table before you group it. So in this example, I am going to filter first to only look at tracks that are greater than 300,000 milliseconds. Whereas the having clause filters the groups after the data has been grouped. So the having filter only applies to the group by clause. So in this case, having counts greater than 10, I'm only going to return the album IDs, which is in the group by clause, if they have a count greater than 10. So having is not standalone, it has to be with the group by, where is an entire table filter, and we are going to see how you can have both in an example. So let's hop in and practice. So I'm going to open up SQLite Studio. If you have not installed SQLite Studio, no issues there. I'm going to have a link in the description below of how you can actually download SQLite Studio. So in this case, and I'm just going to collapse some of the tables that I have been working with because I still just want to look at this invoice table. So we're still in the Chinook database here and we're working with the invoice table and these are all of our columns. So our first question is, return the total amount each customer has spent on invoices in total. So before I even figure out what to do, I like to look at the data. So keep in mind, we could do our select star to return everything from invoices, or I can put Chinook.invoices because the Chinook is a database. And I'm going to do a limit of five because keep in mind, I don't want to return everything. The limit clause is going to return the first five rows. In here, I see that we have 
customer represented by customer ID. And then we also have a total column. So I want to return the total amount each customer has spent on invoices. So it looks like I may want to sum up the total column and group it by a particular variable that represents the customer. So if that was enough hints, you can pause the video and try it yourself. All right, and so now we are going to get started and I'm only gonna return the two columns that I need here. So I'm gonna return customer ID and I'm also going to return the sum of the total. And I'm gonna use an alias here to say total spent. I'm gonna do from the invoices table. And in order to figure out how much each customer has spent, I'm gonna go ahead and group by that customer ID. I'm gonna run it. And here I have it. Customer one has spent 39, 62, customer two, 37, and so forth and so forth and so forth. And I definitely, if I wanted to order this by the customer who spent the most at the top, so maybe I can add an order by clause that sorts this in a particular way. That will be a fun challenge for you to kind of think about and add to this query. Awesome. So the next one is return the total amount of each of each customer has spent on invoices only if the customer has spent more than 25. And since it seems like all of these have spent more than 25 at first glance, I'm going to put more than 40 here. So let's return if they've spent more than 40. So I'm gonna work with the same query above. So select customer ID. We want a sum of the total to see the total amount that they spent as total spent. We wanna bring it from that invoices table still. We're still grouping it by the customer ID, but now I only want to return customer IDs that have spent more than 40 because these could be my loyal customers and maybe I wanna send them a coupon. Like I said, think of use cases for the queries you do. It makes it a lot more fun and also applicable to every day. So I'm gonna say having, I'm gonna say sum of total <clears throat> greater than 40. <clears throat> so let's see here. Yep, I'm returning the customer IDs. You can tell that it started at customer ID five versus one. And these are all my customers who have spent more than 40. Now, why did I use sum of total here? Could I have used total spent? Well, let's see what it does because a lot of things you can try with code before you ask questions. And it still worked for me. So the having total spent, I was also able to use and it gave me the same result. Awesome. So our last question here, return the total amount each customer has spent on invoices only if the customer has spent more than 25. We only care about California customers. So there's a lot going on here. I need to only look at California customers. Then I need to get the customers who have spent more than 25. Once again, I'm going to say more than, let's say, 30 here in this case. Or actually, I'm going to say more than 40. Okay, so let's do this. So we want to select customer ID again. We also want to do our same sum of total as total spent. And then I'm also going to return the billing state just to verify that I'm only returning customers in California. I'm gonna do from invoices. And now I'm gonna do my where clause because the where has to come before the group by. So remember there is a specific order where you have to write your clauses, select from where group by having order by limit. It is in that order. So make sure you write it in that order. It does not mean that it is executed in that order. So in this case, I'm gonna say where billing state equals to CA. And then I want to group by customer ID and I only want to return customers having a total spent of greater than 40. Okay, billing state, I spelled state wrong, where billing state 
is equal to CA group by customer ID. What is it screaming at me here? Group by, let's see what our error is if it yells at me. Group by, check there is a syntax error. That's what it says at the bottom, near group. Oh, I put in a semicolon. So see how I troubleshooted that. I accidentally added another semicolon. Awesome. So now let's go ahead and run this. And I see that there is no customers who have spent more than 40. Yikes. What if I did 20 here and see what happens? Okay, so I have a few customers in California that have spent more than 20. Awesome, awesome. So that is the group buy and having clauses. As always, try to practice. Tomorrow is going to be a practice video where we can bring all of what we learned in this little section together. But practice, practice, try to troubleshoot. Google to help you troubleshoot. I'm going to drop the link to the topic list in the Facebook group below, as well as a link to my Etsy shop that has cool data merch, as well as to buy me a coffee. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.